you hear a knock at the door. You're expecting trick-or-treaters, but when you answer, no one is there. However, something is a bone-white envelope with a crimson wax seal lying on the doormat. Picking it up, you look around for a delivery person, but are met with only the blank stare of your jack-o'-lantern. On one side of the envelope is your name, handwritten in calligraphy, and the unmistakable imprint of a skull in the wax on the other. You crack the seal and remove the contents. It appears to be an invitation, and it reads, The honor of your presence is requested for a haunted house party at the old mansion commonly known as the Grindhouse. Tonight, All Hallows Eve, 8 o'clock sharp. Come for the food, drinks, and ghosts. Stay for 12 hours and win $10 million. Formal attire is not required. No RSVP necessary. The host. You know this place. The old mansion on the hill was the scene of one of the grisliest murders in recent memory. Newly purchased by a mystery buyer, people go out of their way to avoid even driving by it. This must be a reality game show or something. But how did you get picked? Ten million dollars? You should at least check it out, right? As you arrive at the massive decaying front door, several other people are already waiting with the same inquisitive yet confused look you must have. A few of them are holding invitations similar to yours. At precisely 8 o'clock, the heavy oak door opens and a tall, narrow man in a tuxedo and a featureless white mask ushers you into the foyer. Once you're all inside, he addresses the group. Thank you all for attending this evening. I am your host. His voice is deep and ominous. I promise the entertainment will be to die for. The front door slams shut and the heavy deadbolt slides into place on its own. You get the feeling that that's not the way out. Is there a way out? So this is Jody. Her backstory is, six months ago you sold your soul to your local mobile carrier for a new smartphone. In the moment you thought, gosh, what a great deal. I barely even used my soul to begin with. But now you realize food has no taste, colors all look washed out, and life has no joy. They offered to sell you your soul back, but at a staggering price of $10 million. Also, you shattered the screen of that new phone less than a week after getting it. The persona for Jody. I am Miguel. You have a gambling addiction. To make matters worse, you were terrible at it. You found a high-stakes poker game run by the mob and thought this could finally be your chance to get rich quick. When you saw you had a king high straight flush, you went all in on a $10 million hand, putting up your family as collateral. You lost. The mob has given you two weeks to come up with the money or else your whole family would pay him the price. And I am... Okay, so we will roll to see who's the first volunteer. Two. Five. So you get to pick. I'll go first. Entering the first room, the chapel. The sound of an organ welcomes you into a small, musty chapel. The pews are lined with rotting skeletons dressed in dusty suits and dresses. Up at the altar stands a sobbing woman in a wedding dress. She looks to be at least a hundred years old. Her dress is ripped and covered in stains. She turns to look at you and moans, He never came! One survivor must volunteer to be the groom, then rolls a die. Also, I'm going to reveal my item. It is the cursed amulet, 
Reveal this item at any time to equip. It cannot be unequipped. You become immune to torso wounds. This item cannot be stolen. At any time you take a wound, roll an additional die afterwards. If you get a one, you take two torso wounds, not immune from this. If you get a two to six, nothing happens. Huh. So... Who's going to volunteer? I'll volunteer. I'll marry the old lady. Okay. So you roll a dice, and it's a one. Okay. The bride cracks a wretched smile as you approach. Between her green, rotted teeth, you are assaulted by a stench that makes you gag. As she kisses you, you feel an energy surge from you into the woman. As you pull away, you notice she is suddenly youthful and beautiful. You turn away in horror and notice the whole room seems to have aged tremendously. All survivors, except for the groom, take a number of wounds equal to the groom's roll. Except for the groom. So I take a wound equal to the one. Okay. And can you use your amulet for that? No, the amulet only prevents me from getting wounds to my torso. So it says, if you have a wound, you take a roll of dice? Yes, yeah, so I have, now I have to roll a dice as well. Let's see if you get a second wound. No second wound. Okay. All right, that wasn't too bad. All right, so now we will go into the furnace. You find yourself in some sort of huge boiler room with rattling and steaming pipes running in every direction. A horde of faintly glowing figures are slowly shuffling your way. As they get closer, you see they look like people, but they are covered in blisters and horrible burns. Each survivor must secretly choose an action die. Or, each survivor must secretly choose an action on a die. One, throw a survivor of your cho choice at the horde so you can escape. Two, try to run past the creatures. Three, prepare to defend yourself. So we got to vote. One, two, or three. One, two, three. <clears throat> Survivors deal or reveal their dice one at a time. Um, first player moving clockwise. The results of your die choice are as follows. So I did the three. Well, I went first. You try to run past the horrors, but their hands burn you like hot lives. Take two limb wounds. Three, you're no match for the burning creature. Take three wounds unless another tried to... Another savior try to sacrifice you, in which you take no room. So I take three wounds. You got to roll, right? Yes. I will do the three wounds first, and then roll. And it's a one, which means I have to take two torso wounds. You're dead. I de I'm dead. All right, so I will reveal my persona. Hang on. So I am the Martyr. If you reveal this card once per room, you may take an injury in place of a survivor. So I'll take one of your chest wounds. Okay. So then I only get one. Okay. That room did not go well. No. <laughs> I'm starting to get pretty injured. Now we're going to the basement. You got four, I got three wounds. You step into a dark, bare room. You hear the sound of rattling chains. A feral-looking woman is chained to the darkest corner of the room. Her long hair is matted down over her grungy face. A pure white eye glares at you between greasy strands of black hair. The key to the next room dangles from her neck. Choose one survivor to retrieve the key from the woman's neck. That survivor must roll a die. Well, you volunteered last time, so I will roll the die this time. Okay. A 
one. The pale woman sniffs the air like an animal and then lets out a guttural growl. One to two, she eats your face. Wow. Take one head wound. You fail to retrieve the key. You, you or someone else must try again. What was it, six? Uh, I'll do my crystal ball, which allows me to change a dice roll to a six. So Mary's roll will now be a six. So you get an arm wound, but you get the key. Okay, so... You're going to lose an arm. Oh no, I lost my cell phone! Okay. All right, the parlor. You step into a room covered in confounding creations. Three monstrous hybrid animals are on display in striking poses in one corner. You see a lion with its teeth replaced by snakes. In the center, you see or there is a peacock whose tail feathers have been replaced by scorpion tails. My on goodness. the right, there is a wolf with giant bat wings. Each survivor must choose an animal to sneak past. So one, two, three. The lion, the peacock, or the wolf. Mm-hmm. All right, I got my vote. Okay, I'll pick three. Two. Okay, so it says roll a die for the table. Only survivors choose which animal. So only one of these are gonna activate. So we're hoping for one or two. Okay. Ah, uh, you got a five. The wolf leaps into the air with the help of its wings. It dives at you, snapping wildly with its fangs. Take three wounds. Uh... So now I roll? No, roll die for two. Okay. So your animal didn't activate. Okay, gotcha. Alrighty. Last room, the laboratory. Laboratory. Okay. Beakers, test tubes, Tesla coils, and a thousand other scientific devices span every inch of the bright room. Blood stains smeared around the floor indicate the tests have been performed on human subjects. The host appears wearing a lab coat and rubber gloves. I've always been fascinated by the scientific method. Would you like to hear my hypothesis on how this all turns out? An assortment of loosely, loosely stitched together body parts rise from an operating table. The monster turns to you and lets out an angry cry. The host is ecstatic. My hypothesis is you all die. All survivors lose their healthiest limb to the monster. If you have no limbs, suffer one wound. So I lose this leg. Uh -huh. Survivors must take turns roll. Okay, so the monster's health equals the number of limbs collected. So you lost a limb, I lost a limb, so that's two limbs. Mm -hmm. So survivors must take turns rolling to defeat the monster. Um, so we have to roll a five or a six. How many wounds does it take? Two. two. Because he, he gained okay. two. All right, so... Um, I'm assuming I will, so if I roll a 5 or a 6, he'll take a wound. Otherwise, uh, I'll lose a limb or take a wound. It's a 6. Ace. Takes a wound. Alright. And six. it's a 6, so the monster is now dead. The monster's dead. We made it. We actually survived this time without turning into ghosts. Yeah. We win. So, now, to determine of the two of us who wins, I think we're about equal on the number of uh, wounds each of us has, right? I'm going to destroy you. Uh, at the end of the game, if all players are alive, you gain 10 points. Yeah, you win because I need for you to die <laughs> in order to win. So, mine says that if, at any point win. in the game you're the only living player, you instantly win. 
Um, so I'm supposed to leave no survivors because I'm the host assistant. So Douglas wins. <laughs> hey, you're always like that. <laughs> See you next time. Bye bye. You won ten million dollars. How do you feel? Well, apparently I got to pay the mob. They're gonna kill my family. Oh. Well, if that was real life, though. Well, I just don't get my soul back. <laughs> The uh, host isn't responsible for souls. You can't give you one back. Mm -mm. Cheap, cheap bosses, right? <laughs>